When your buyer asks you if they should buy this home, and yes, we get that question a lot. You are their trusted advisor, so they're expecting feedback from you. They're not literally asking you if this is something that they should proceed with and this is perfect for them, but they want your opinion. They want your advice. They want you to go through this journey and help them make the right decision. So yeah, it's a lot of weight on your shoulders and you definitely should take this seriously. I a lot of times have clients asking me, when am I going to be ready? Like, what's the typical timeline? And I always respond with, I am always ready to buy a home. I've seen thousands and thousands of homes. You're going to be ready and you're going to know your comfort level after about 10 or 12 homes. Once you've seen that 10 or 12 properties, you're going to kind of know what you're looking for and they're going to hopefully have verbalized that with you so you can help guide them through the process. It's a huge decision. And when someone does ask me, are, are you ready? You know, am I ready? Is this the right home? 90% of the time, my answer is yes, but I don't answer that with, yeah, we absolutely should buy this, like rainbows and unicorns. I actually respond with a very detailed, more constructive answer of yes. So you know this buyer, you've toured with them, you've listened to their goals, their dreams, you understand exactly what they're looking for and your search is set up so that the homes you're seeing are relevant. They're exactly what they want. And they probably could have bought maybe two or three of the previous homes and nipped this in the bud, but they want the, the verification. It's a huge purchase. Run through the criteria when they ask you that question. Does it have open concept? Are we on the top floor of a condo or is it in the right neighborhood? Does it have the yard? There are specifics that this buyer has told you and that you've helped them navigate. And when the house checks most slash all of the boxes, you have to give them that encouragement. You have to give them that little boost to write the offer, especially if it's a first time buyer. It is daunting. It's it's overwhelming. It's emotional. There's so many things going through this person's head and they're writing a big check. So definitely the biggest check they've ever written and a huge commitment financially. So make sure you're there to not just say, yes, it's beautiful, but give them the data. Give them the information that they've told you and recite it back to them. Your next step obviously is running the comps and making sure that you're presenting the buyer with the proper approach to purchase this home. And that entails suggesting a pricing strategy, detailing the highlights of the home versus the other ones and making sure that you're getting this buyer a fair price. Again, we've talked about pricing in this market and all of them are gonna be different. So into in in the, the grand scheme of things don't nickel and dime ever when you're buying someone's 10-year 15-year home do not fight over a thousand or two thousand or even five thousand dollars when they really want this home whether it's competitive or a non-competitive market the seller is going to have their value and hopefully the buyer and seller aren't too far apart and you can make the deal work but definitely encourage them to get to that point where you get the deal done not only to get the deal done because I told you there's 90% of the time you're gonna say yes. 10% of the time you are gonna actually kind of talk them out of it or make them reflect on, is this really the right house? And we'll talk about what that looks like. So get through your pricing strategy, make sure you understand what market conditions you're in and give that buyer a roadmap of what it looks like to then go through the buying offer process. So they're not asking you every step of the way, what's next, what's next, what's next. Give them that roadmap. Let them know that you're running comps, suggesting that pricing strategy, start the negotiation strategy and let them know what that looks like and work through it with them. Kelsey put together a really comprehensive training um, video on contracts. They're so important. We've had a lot of brokers having some trouble writing them or trying to find the right you know, form or what to check. You guys have to know what you're presenting because if you're presenting an incomplete offer, it's going to reflect poorly on you. Make sure you know what you're doing and how to do it. Um, there's a lot of great videos out there. I, I've gone through the entire MLS 7.0 contract as well. Make sure the details are buttoned up. Make sure you're communicating with the seller's agent and understanding what they want so you can re you know, go back and tell your buyer, hey, the seller wants this. They want to close in this number of days. Forget what the seller's pricing is. You want to know the terms that best suit them. I recently had a situation where my client was like, should we buy this? And my answer was yes, but no. So they, the story is pretty quick and it's actually a good one. And it's happened a few times. This buyer went to the Cirrus condo development downtown 
and they toured it with the developer's broker. To me, it's such a conflict of interest. I can't believe there aren't rules against this, but the developer's agent is there to sell you the condo at max value. You have no representation if you're a buyer and you go in there and tour that property. So my client went in there and they loved this unit and they toured it and they were inches away from writing a contract that day. For whatever reason, they came out of it they went and talked to a few friends and their friends were like, you have to talk to Matt. You have to talk to Matt before you buy this condo. Make sure he knows what you're doing and you know what you're doing because this is a huge purchase. So buyer calls me. I go and tour the Sears condo with them. I love it. I'm like, this is a fantastic condo, but we need to see some other properties. This is literally the only thing they ever saw. They fell in love, but that's not how you buy real estate. You have to see comparing properties. You have to know what you're getting yourself into. We went and toured six or eight different condos. They still love the Cirrus condo. We wrote an offer like pretty early on in that process, like during the six to eight condo um, tour process on the Cirrus condo. They were asking ridiculous values. I, long story short, I ended up saving them a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Seriously, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The developers were asking like one two. We got it at one oh five oh, and. It was a great story. My clients were so happy that they went through the process. They they saw the properties. They went down that road of, yes, they definitely want it, but they needed to verify why they wanted it compared to other buildings. They really love new construction. Some people just love new things. Um, I personally have never bought a new car. I don't get it, um, but or a new condo for that matter. But they definitely wanted that. At the end of it, they were just so happy. Like They bought me gifts. They were just constantly telling me how appreciative they were it's a lot of money so that's more of like a yes but no situation where you really have to educate your client and let them know that you're there as an advocate for them and you're giving them the guidance and you're making sure they understand pricing that is so important so the 10 percent of the no and what does that look like that's you being a really good broker and having the confidence to tell your buyer what they've told you sometimes buyers get exhausted and they settle and we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that whatever they've told you, location, size, building type, layout, style is all reflective in the in the property that they're buying. And make sure you're challenging them. Challenge them along the way when you're in tours, when they're like, Matt, should we buy this property? Like again, 90% of the time it's a yes. But if it really is so off base and that you could just tell they're exhausted, make sure you have the confidence to sit them down and be like, listen, when we were first touring, you guys were dead set on open concept. You wanted to have that cohesive feel when you were entertaining with your guests. And this kitchen is closed off. I know it's gorgeous, but is this really something you want? And challenging them is going to give you tons of credibility. It's going to help your referral base. It's going to help you grow your business. And it's going to give you the confidence to be the broker that you really should be in, you know, adding value to this process. You're not just there to turn keys and write offers. You're there to give your advice and your expertise and listen, 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 listen to your client and make sure they're making the right decision. I have absolutely talked people out of buying properties, you know, so many times, honestly, like at least 50 times I've talked people out of it. It does seem counterintuitive because you're like, mm, this is kind of my job. I'm like here to help sell things, but you're really not. You're facilitating a transaction. There's so many layers to our business and so many layers to this job that you have to understand they're there and they've hired you to be their advocate, not just to be a salesman. So we are not selling used cars. We don't tell everybody that this is the right fit. Make sure you're challenging them, getting them all the information, price terms, all the fit that they're looking for in every single deal. Thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, fire away. I have a question. What do you say to buyer clients that want to put in an offer on the first place they see where they don't really have that perspective of that's my yes, but no, Nina. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so hard. You have to make sure. And that's what my clients did at the Sears condo is they, they first place they saw, make sure that they know what they're doing and make sure you run through the comps. And if you have time, get them out and see more stuff. I mean, you really have to, it's your job to do that. I've had people buy the first property they've seen, but I mean, come on, at least show them four or five places so you can sleep at night. 
yeah, for sure. <laughs> One and done is tough. I, I, you really have to make sure they've seen a handful of properties. Thanks for joining me, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.